What's going on, everybody? Hope you're having a good Wednesday. Got a couple of stories I want to go over with you this morning. Thought this would be a good place to start. This is from the Daily Mail. BBC journalists are becoming addicted to toxic Twitter. Bosses say as a corporation launches review into social media use amid fears it is undermining impartiality rules. Okay. Yeah. Where were you about six to ten years ago? Uh, you're just now figuring this out? Some tells me this is like a this like, yeah, hey, we're 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 really looking into it, but they're not. Journalists addicted to Twitter, you say. You don't say <laughs> How are you just now talking about this? Are they addicted to toxic Twitter? Absolutely they are. You ever want to find a journalist? You won't find them out in the field. You know where you're going to find them? You're going to find them on Twitter, tweeting hundreds of times a day. Hundreds of times a day. About nonsense. Desperately trying to go viral as much as possible. It's... uh. It's true, and they are addicted to it, and it is shaping everybody up to be really incredibly toxic. I think Twitter has done more damage to human societies than, I I can't think of anything else. Twitter has really damaged human culture, society, everything. I, I, I don't know if we can ever go back to being normal or, or anything ever again. They've, they've, They've literally ruined us as a civilization. It's the mo- probably the most toxic thing, I think, ever created by humans. Social media was never as bad until Twitter became a thing. And like, what was it before Twitter? What was it like Facebook and MySpace? Those felt kind of harmless for the most part. But then Twitter came around and just things have just been nasty ever since that platform has grown. And I don't expect it to get any better. I don't. As long as Twitter's around, it's just going to keep getting worse. And you could say, well, well, let's get rid of Twitter and replace it with something else. Or whatever you replace it with is going to become just as nasty as Twitter. I really just don't think that there's any escaping it. I don't know what to do about it, but it's uh, definitely a huge problem. Huge problem. And it's just going to get worse. But I just find it funny. Oh, now we're, we're just figuring this out. So a couple of notes here. A key BBC figure revealed that the company has faced staff social media issues. The problems include reporters frequently backing left-wing liberal views online. Some BBC editorial staff have been disciplined for their use of social media. Reports say some BBC reporters are addicted to Twitter and want to go viral. I'd say that that's a pretty fair assessment for sure. Um but I wonder, you know, are they even going to do anything? One thing that I've learned from following this stuff and, and you know, people that work for these companies is they're allowed to get on Twitter and be nasty and treat people like trash and cancel people and do whatever they want. And it doesn't really matter. These companies don't do anything and they don't discipline them because the companies are more afraid of their employees in some ways. And... When anybody ever says, hey, why are you letting your employees talk like this? They say, well, they're just freelancers. Uh, they don't not, they don't really reflect the views of our company. But I always say, well, they kind of do. They represent your company. They usually have your company all over their bios because without your company, they're not anybody. But, you know, it's it's just funny. So this was an interesting read. But in many ways, it's too little too late. And... Also, is it really just kind of, I think, maybe a smoke screen? Like, hey, hey yeah, we're, we're looking into this. We see you. And then, you know, it just goes away. This really didn't even really get any, tra- any traction. Uh, the Daily Mail, from what I've seen, is the only place that's really talked about it. So, I don't know. Interesting stuff, nonetheless. Maybe Vox Media should have taken notice of this, as they are the next on the chopping block. Vox Media preparing round of layoffs as business fails to improve amid... Uh, well, you know, the beer bug problem. I thought this was kind of funny. Listen listen to this. Uh, Vox Media has informed its unions that it plans to cut jobs as advertising revenue has slumped in the first and second quarters. Vox Media is preparing staff cuts to both uni- unionized and non-union workers. Vox was 
40% off its revenue forecast for the second quarter and plans to miss its full year target by 25%. Pretty insane if you think about it. Vox is pretty big. A lot of the websites that love canceling people are attached to them. If Vox goes down, that would leave uh, a lot of people looking for work. It's kind of funny that some of these uh, journalists over on Twitter have kind of stepped up their canceling game lately. And maybe it's because of this. Well, you know, we cancel enough people, maybe we can get a job. Maybe that's what's going on here. It's just, it's just funny. So Vox, you remember last year, I believe it was last year, was on that big uh, adpocalypse run with YouTube, trying to do whatever they could with old Maza, and then they fired Maza. But Vox played a heavy part in that. Uh, they've been asking for this for a long time, and I don't feel bad for them. See you later, Vox. And uh, also, speaking of nasty people, Bloomberg, no, cancel culture isn't a threat to civilization. Oh, it's not a threat that if you disagree with somebody, uh, you could potentially lose your livelihood and uh, be unpersoned, basically, because anytime you try to get a job somewhere, uh, they'll just tag you in and cancel you over and over again and ruin your life. Tag in your job and your coworkers and all kinds of stuff. That's not a threat to civilization. It's going to improve civilization. These people are so disingenuous. It makes me it makes me sick to my stomach. It really does. There's a whole piece from Bloomberg under opinion. Yeah, I'm sure. Yeah, this is it's it's not a threat. It's okay to have wrong think. You know, being just cancel somebody for wrong think. That's not a that's not a threat to civilization. It's like, do you think anybody actually believes this when they read it? And then I've got a funny story for you guys. Check this out. So anime voice actress announces marriage. Fans start getting rid of her merchandise the next day. What's the story here? Well, you have this voice actress over in Japan. Uh, I believe this is her right here, maybe. Uh, She's getting married. She's getting married. And uh, she announced that, hey, I'm so happy. This is going to be a, a life-changing thing for me, and I'm, I want to share it with you guys. And then all of her fans, probably, uh, I would say, some lonely dudes decided to uh, divest themselves of all of her merchandise and sell it all. <laughs> because for some reason, they thought they had a chance of uh, marrying her or something or like hooking up with her. So kind of funny. This happens a lot. You see this on especially with like some of the just chatting girls, like some dudes will find out that they have boyfriends and get all upset. Like they actually had a chance of hooking up with these girls. It's just kind of funny to me. So I got a kick out of that one and wanted to share it with you guys. Next up, comic book sales. They appear to be up. North American comic sales hit record 1.21 billion. Up from 2018. Well, 2019 is up from 2018. A couple things going on here. Uh, The big thing everyone is celebrating is the rise in graphic graphic novel sales. And there was a large increase in them. But that's not because of superhero comics. Superhero comics still not doing very well. Uh, The reason that graphic novels are doing well is because of manga. That's right. Japanese comics are saving North American sales. But they're not saving the sales of American comic book writers, which is what's funny, as I see a lot of American comic book artists and writers celebrating. Ooh, comics are doing good. Do you really think that manga becoming the top dog is going to help you get a job? I don't think it quite works that way. Another big thing is Scholastic is doing really good. Scholastic, I could do a whole video on that and how it's kind of a scam. But uh, regardless, that's doing well. But Periodical Comics, not really doing that great. They're up 5% actually. So those sales are up 5%. But if you go and look at the monthly sales, one of the reasons... I personally think that there was a 5% increase 
is you have to remember what did we have last year. We had like Action Comics, I think the number one thousand came out, or was it Detective Comics? You had a lot of big event event books, Marvel flooding the shelves, stuff like that. Their little variant programs. It's it's going to cause a little bit of an issue. Plus, um, from what I understand, superhero comics aren't really increasing. It seems like it was a lot of the indie books that were pushing that up. But maybe I'm wrong. Uh, I'm not sure. Regardless, it did go up 5%. But the overall growth in North American comic book sales is largely due to manga and Scholastic, not superhero books. Superhero books are on their way out. And it didn't have to be that way. It didn't have to be that way. They could still be just as popular as they used to be because, I mean, I always like to point to My Hero Academia, which is doing very well. Obviously, there is an appetite out there for superhero books, but the problem is that the people who write the books here in North America have no talent, and that obviously no one wants to read about uh, you know, Aquaman helping the climate change problem. It's it's not really something that people want to read for escapism. So naturally, they're kind of falling off of the wagon. But they'll say, oh, well, you know, these these books are needed for the movies. Not really. There's over almost like we have almost 100 years worth of stories now to adapt. So uh, they're not really that needed. Plus, they can just play, pay a Hollywood writer. So I, I don't know. Comic sales are doing okay thanks to manga and Scholastic. I think uh, Marvel and DC Comics really need to take a look at themselves and figure some, some things out. But anyway, one final story here. Just for fun, I saw this. 10 best female superheroes of all time. They put Captain Marvel at the top. But somehow, someway, Newsrama was able to contain themselves and only put Captain Marvel at number four. I was really shocked by that when I opened this. This is the only reason I want to talk about it because I thought, oh, Captain Marvel is for sure going to be number one. And they put her at number four. I was surprised. They actually put Storm above her, where she belongs, above Captain Marvel. Invisible Woman, who's a much more interesting character than Captain Marvel as well. And then the one woman that belongs at number one, Wonder Woman, of course, the the best female superhero, at least in my opinion. But... uh, an odd list like why is the wasp above black widow i'm not sure what they're they're doing here but uh, the true story here is that captain marvel was held back to four you know they they probably debated that like i said all these outlets have a captain marvel room where somebody just goes around and like looks for captain marvel's stupid stories it's it's insane but anyway that's it guys hope you enjoyed the video uh what do you guys think about all this i'd like to hear what you have to say also if you would Throw a like up, share the video, make sure you still subscribe. Subscribe if you new, hit that notification bell, and I'll see you on the next one. Peace. Also, if you want to help support the channel, check out my Teespring store. There's a link in the description. You can find some merchandise in there that you might want to check out.